It's been a while. It's been a while since I for you guys know that song by Stain. It's been a while. I was born in '93, so technically that, that makes me a '90s kid. But I grew up in the 2000s as well, and I want to say that the 2000s were the best decade ever. I'm just calling it. I'm saying it right now. As far as music goes, that hard rock genre, not just bands like Stain, but Shine Down, Three Days Grace, Breaking Benjamin, bands like that, Seether. Those bands clap. Oh my gosh, it's a dying breed, that genre of music, sadly. It's been a while since I've filmed this Time to Football podcast, but I'm back. And my name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. We're going to be talking about a lot of things regarding Sam Darnold being traded to the Carolina Panthers. Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers moving up to that number three spot. Who will they be drafting? We expect it to be a quarterback, as well as some praise and some positivity thrown in the direction of the Houston Texans. Dealing with everything with Deshaun Watson and those allegations, but also cleaning up the mess this whole offseason, given that they have no first and second round picks. We're going to discuss all of that. But I want to say it's been a while since I've done this podcast because I wanted to take the time to really make this thing look good. I invested a lot of money. I'm talking about over a grand in equipment for this show. I'm talking about lights, I'm talking about cameras, I'm talking about monitors, everything you can talk about or everything that you can think about, I invested my money in that. As a matter of fact, I got this pretty cool Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro switcher for you guys that aren't camera geeks. What that means is that I can sit here right at the desk and then switch between camera angles right at the tip of my fingers. So you see camera one right now, but then there's camera two right over here. Back to camera one. Back to camera two. It's wonderful. Technology. Right here on my desk. I bought all this equipment because I know how to operate all this. I've been doing behind the scenes work as well. I know how to do on air and behind the scenes as well. Can you believe that nobody wanted to hire me? Um, they wanted uh, females with attractive features. So yeah, feminism is alive and well. But before I get canceled, I'm just going to move on. We're going to talk about all those topics like I mentioned, but first we have to get into NFL news and notes as well. News around the NFL for this week at least. Sam Darnold, that's probably the biggest thing going around in the NFL right now, has been traded from the New York Jets to the Carolina Panthers. He will now be re reuniting with Robbie Anderson and Matt Rule's system. So we're going to discuss later on what the Jets gave up and how does that fit Sam Donald and is this a good move for the Panthers for the Jets and for Sam Donald as well we're going to discuss more of that later on in depth but speaking of that Sam Donald trade moving on to the next topic uh, as far as the NFL news goes Teddy Bridgewater requested a trade outside of Carolina it's kind of expected that he did that and I think we're going to mention later on when we talk about the 49ers and which quarterback could they draft which team could trade for Teddy Bridgewater? So stay tuned for that. Speaking of the NFL draft, the Atlanta Falcons and the Detroit Lions are open to trading back in the draft. The Falcons have the number four pick. The Lions have the number seven pick. A lot of different variables and options that could happen. A lot of teams want to trade up. They could acquire more draft picks and get more depth for their team. So the Falcons and the Lions are thinking about trading back. But a team that is going to stay put for sure has come out and said that the Bengals will stay put at number five. Too many good players that they would pass up on if they were to trade back. So the Bengals have come out and said, nope, we like the number five spot. I don't know whether it's going to be Sewell from Oregon, whether it's going to be Pitts from Florida. Whoever's available, we're going to take the best player available. Bengals staying in the top five. Speaking of the Bengals, they have granted their longtime veteran Giovanni Bernard his release. He asked for his release, and they actually granted his release after eight NFL seasons with the Cincinnati Bengals. Giovanni Bernard will be moving on to a new team. One of the better pass catching running backs in the NFL would be some valuable depth at 29 years old to any NFL team. Uh, Carlos Dunlap, a former Cincinnati Bengal, has come out and said the Seattle Seahawks are going to stay put with Russell Wilson. After having a conversation with Russell Wilson, Carlos Dunlap, according to his words, said that Russell Wilson is, quote, he's with us and he's here to stay. 
So that's the NFL news and notes around the NFL for this week. Man, the switcher thing is actually really cool. Uh, Speaking of which, I actually didn't mention my lights that are right behind me. So by the click of a button, I can change the lights to any color that I want. For instance, if we want to talk about the Carolina Panthers and Sam Darnold, by just one touch, I change it to blue. Isn't that wonderful? Not quite Carolina blue, but we're going to get a look at Sam Darnold and Carolina blue this 2021 NFL season. Because the Jets have traded Sam Darnold to the Carolina Panthers in exchange for a sixth-round pick for this year's draft, a 2022 second-rounder, and a 2022 fourth-rounder. What does this mean for the Jets, for the Panthers, and for Sam Darnold's career? For the Jets, the explanation behind it, Joe Douglas, general manager of the Jets, came out and said that they traded Sam Darnold because of the position that they had in the NFL draft. Drafting number two overall. And if you wanted to move on with a quarterback, hmm, I wonder who they're going to draft in the NFL draft. Hint, hint, it's Zach Wilson. We expect it to be. At least that's what we're going to say in our mock draft next week. So make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with that mock draft next Thursday. It's going to be lots and lots of fun. So it could be Zach Wilson, could be Justin Fields. I don't know who it's going to be. I believe it's going to be Wilson, but I think regardless which quarterback it's going to be, I feel like if I had to put my finger on it that the Jets are going to draft a quarterback. Sam Darnold has moved on to Carolina. What does this mean for Darnold's career? What it means is that he no longer has any more excuses. He was drafted to be the number three overall pick in the 2018 NFL Draft to be that franchise quarterback. Some projected him to be the number one overall pick in that draft. No more excuses at this point moving forward. You finally have weapons. You have one of the best running backs in the NFL in Christian McCaffrey. You have a wide receiver that you played with that you have chemistry with with Robbie Anderson. You have another former first-rounder at the wide receiver position in DJ Moore that you have as an extra weapon. No more excuses. A young and upcoming defense on top of that as well. Guys like Brian Burns, like Derek Brown, like Jeremy Chin, offensive coordinator Joe Brady is going to be his offensive coordinator who's apparently this young, gifted offensive mind. I don't know. He could be. He could not be. Hasn't been in the NFL long enough. But with Darnold... Maybe you could do some amazing things. So for Darnold, I'm excited about his career, and I'm excited about the Carolina Panthers and that division in the NFC South, which I would say, and and compared to all the other divisions in the NFL, the South is up there in terms of offensive talent. So the Panthers were just a quarterback away from being great, and maybe Darnold will be that quarterback. So we'll see about Sam Darnold. Oh, How could I ever forget the ever-so-lovable Adam Gase? No longer in the control of Adam Gase moving on and could have a career resurgence, someone like Ryan Tannehill. It's proven time and time again. Players move on uh, from Adam Gase, have amazing seasons and amazing careers on top of that as well. So, Donald, no more Adam Gase. You should be excited. That's awesome. Now, as expected, Teddy Bridgewater, once they traded for Sam Darnold, has requested a trade. And I think for the longest time, this whole entire coaching staff was ready to move on from Bridgewater and just get another quarterback. I mean, they've been talking about trading him to other teams. They've been inquiring with other teams, hey, will you accept a trade if we trade away Teddy Bridgewater? And they finally got another quarterback, and Teddy Bridgewater and his team came out and said, let's just inquire about a trade. Let's see which other NFL team we could go to. Now, this offense, I feel like, wanted to have a quarterback that was dynamic, and Teddy Bridgewater was not that guy. Now, that that's not me saying that I hate Teddy Bridgewater. I love Bridgewater. I think he's a good quarterback, but he's not dynamic, and that's not me saying that, man, the term game manager is so condescending nowadays around the NFL community. And I'm not saying that to be condescending. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. But Bridgewater, if you think of the definition of a game manager, Bridgewater kind of sort of fits the mold. Hey, you're not going to throw a lot of yards. 
a lot of touchdowns, but also at the same time, you're not going to turn over the ball and you're going to win some games. Like, what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that. At least you win some games. You win six games for the New Orleans Saints, go 6-0. and With the Carolina Panthers, he was a game manager as well. So I think that the Panthers, even though that game manager mold and Bridgewater's play, how he was with the Vikings as well, is not necessarily bad. I don't think that the Panthers were willing to just accept that and just be content with that and realize, okay, maybe we could go to the Super Bowl with this kind of play. I think that they wanted to take the, another step up and get someone that has a potential one day to throw for a lot of yards, has a p- potential to throw for a lot of touchdowns. And Sam Darnold, even though he hasn't proved it just yet in New York, could be that guy. So I think that the Panthers were ready to move on from Bridgewater at that point. But you have wide receivers. You have an, a, an elite running back. You're just one tight end away. And man, the best tight end in the NFL draft right now, Kyle Pitts. Because if everybody goes early getting quarterbacks and magically at number eight, Kyle Pitts falls to you, that's wonderful. But if you think about a team that's thinking about trading down, the Atlanta Falcons at number four, if Kyle Pitts is still available on the board at number four, if you're the Carolina Panthers, do you make that offer for the Atlanta Falcons to trade up maybe a first-round pick, a second-round pick, whatever it may be, a, a draft pick next year as well, to trade up and get Kyle Pitts? Because that offense, if they get Pitts, would be pretty freaking dynamic. So the Carolina Panthers are in a very good position. Sam Donald is in a very good position. And for the New York Jets, they did the best they could. I feel like maybe you could have gotten a little bit more out of Sam Donald if you traded him a little bit earlier before free agency. But because of the situation that you were in, I I feel like you did perfectly fine trading away Sam Donald and potentially drafting your uh, franchise quarterback in what we assume to be either Zach Wilson or Justin Fields. So all three camps, Sam Donald, Carolina Panthers, New York Jets, all win in this trade. But leave your comments down below. Uh, If you guys are watching this on YouTube or if you guys are listening to us on the podcast app, hit us up on social media. Let us know your thoughts and your opinions on Sam Donald being traded to the Carolina Panthers. Is this a good move for his NFL career? Moving on to the next topic that we have, the San Francisco 49ers are in the number three spot in the NFL draft. What is going to happen at the number three spot and which quarterback are they going to take? You like how I did that? Gold and red? For the 49ers, there are four options that the 49ers could draft at number three overall. We're going to name all four options from the least likely to happen to the most likely. Option number four, Zach Wilson, BYU. This isn't me saying that Wilson is the fourth best quarterback in the draft. Obviously not. He's a somewhat clear number two quarterback. I say somewhat clear because Justin Fields is going to have his second pro day, which the 49ers did not attend his first one because they were at the pro day of Mac Jones. So with Justin Fields having a second pro day, the 49ers are going to be there, and they could impress the 49ers, and who knows? Justin Fields could be the number one option. I don't know. But as of right now, Zach Wilson is the number two best quarterback in the draft behind Trevor Lawrence. Now, we say this is the least likely option to happen because – The Jets are enamored by Zach Wilson. They really love Wilson and his talent, and that's why they traded away Darnold, because they have hopes of drafting Wilson in the NFL draft. So, in the rare chance that Justin Fields were to be taken by the New York Jets, yeah, obviously, if you're the 49ers, you have to take Zach Wilson. But, more likely than not, it's going to be Justin Fields that's going to be available on the board because Zach Wilson will be already taken by the New York Jets. So that leads us to option number three. You've got Justin Fields available if Zach Wilson is taken. Who do you take after that? Well, option number three, the third most likely option to happen, it could be Trey Lance. It really could. You don't hear about him a lot. It's a three-way race between Lawrence, Wilson, and Fields. Actually, I would say the three-way race is between Wilson, Fields, and Mac Jones on who the second quarterback is going to be taken or the third quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. 
those picks could be swapped in any sort of way. Mix and match whichever way you want. We don't talk a lot about Trey Lance, though. 28 touchdowns to zero interceptions just a couple years ago at North Dakota State University. And he's the mystery behind this pick. There's some mystery behind this pick, the dark horse that could be taken by Kyle Shanahan. Maybe they're seeing something that we don't know. Maybe they know that Trey Lance is a guy that you can't pass up on. Maybe he could be a guy like Russell Wilson, where John Schneider and the Seattle Seahawks said, we had Russell Wilson ranked right underneath Andrew Luck on our draft board on who the best quarterback was in that draft class. Maybe the 49ers feel the same way about Trey Lance, and that's why they traded up to the number three spot because they don't want any other team, potentially the Denver Broncos, who are uh, three picks ahead of them at number nine, to draft Trey Lance, and they miss out on an opportunity like that. So Trey Lance is the dark horse. There's some mystery behind the pick, and could Kyle Shanahan see something that we don't see and draft Trey Lance? So that's why I feel like Trey Lance could be the third most likely option to happen. Now, two more options for the 49ers. Justin Fields or Mac Jones? Which one is going to be option number two? I'm going to say by the time that this episode is filmed and recorded, option number two, Justin Fields. I like the talent. I like I like how dynamic he is and how great he is under big pressure situations in college. And I honestly did not expect Justin Fields to be that athletic. Not calling him unathletic. I didn't think that. I thought, okay, maybe he could run. But what do you run? Like a 4-4, four, 4-5 four, four, on his pro day? Pretty freaking fast. I really love Justin Fields. And John Lynch is also a fan of Justin Fields as well. There's a lot of tension between John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan as far as which direction they go in. Because Kyle Shanahan loves more of those pocket passers. And John Lynch wants someone that's more dynamic, someone that can just bring more life to an NFL offense. And Justin Fields could be that dynamic player for the 49ers. Uh, that 49ers offense would be fun to watch if Justin Fields were that quarterback. And if I am pushing for anyone to get drafted at number three overall by the 49ers, I would love to see, personally, as an NFL fan, I would love to see Justin Fields in a 49ers uniform. That would be freaking awesome. So option number two, I have Justin Fields. Option number one. We already talked about Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields. Mac Jones from Alabama. I'm just as surprised as you. Dude, I'm not saying that Mac Jones is better than Justin Fields. I'm not saying that He's better than Zach Wilson or or Trey Lance. I don't know. According to a lot of NFL scouts, they're saying that Mac Jones is the fifth best quarterback in the NFL draft. Fifth best quarterback? And you're going to take him as the third best quarterback. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Why is that? Well, the reasoning behind it is because Kyle Shanahan loves those pocket passers like I mentioned with Justin Fields. He loves those pocket passers, and he's a student of the game under his dad, Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan loves pocket passers as well. For instance, Mac Jones, a lot of NFL comparisons, his pro comparison is compared to Jake Plummer. You remember him? Signed with the Denver Broncos after playing with the Arizona Cardinals, was the quarterback for a little bit of time for Mike Shanahan in Denver. Mac Jones is comparable to someone like Jake Plummer, and that's why Kyle Shanahan could pull the trigger and say that Mac Jones is going to be the quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Listen, before you dislike this video, that's not me saying that I would take him at number three overall. This is just what I think is going to happen, and we can like it, we can hate it, but I feel like that the 49ers, as of today, when this video is being filmed, this podcast is being released, Mac Jones is going to be a San Francisco 49er. So to recap, option four, least likely to happen, Zach Wilson. Three, Trey Lance. Two, Justin Fields. And one, Mac Jones. But be on the lookout because if the 49ers who attend the pro day of Justin Fields are impressed on April 14th, 
when his pro day is, we could be talking about Justin Fields being a San Francisco 49er. So leave your comments and your thoughts down below. What do you think is going to happen with Justin Fields, with Max Jones, in the San Francisco 49ers? The last topic for this week's show, the Houston Texans have been under a lot of criticism as of late, and that's just not discussing everything with Sean Watson, those allegations that are out there, but also with everything. This has been spanning for the last year with Bill O'Brien and trading away DeAndre Hopkins and uh, getting rid of their first and second round picks as well, just being in a tough situation on top of that with Deshaun Watson and everything going on there. But we like to spread positivity on this channel. We really do. We like to give teams their praise whenever they're doing a very good job. And I feel like this offseason, I wanted to take a segment to talk about this. The Houston Texans have been doing a very, very good job this whole offseason. From free agency, from their hiring their staff, whoever it may be, they have done a wonderful job. And I'm explaining that right here. So starting off with the Houston Texans, we want to give them praise because let's let's recap the whole negative situation that they've been in. Okay, so Bill O'Brien was head coach. He was also the general manager for some reason. I don't know. Thought he was Bill Belichick. They were negative in cap space. They had no draft picks in the first two rounds. Deshaun Watson comes out with all these sexual assault allegations. And they were really in a bind. But let me just read off the free agent signings that they had this season. 2021 free agency. Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram, Desmond King, Alex Erickson, Tyrod Taylor, Chris Conley, Jordan Jenkins, Justin Britt, Andre Roberts, and Cameron Johnston. Those are their signings. A lot of you guys are probably like, who are these people? Okay. So Cameron Johnston is a punter. Uh, some offensive lineman that you guys may not know. Justin Britt is a is a center as well. So uh, some very good signings that they had this offseason, given the amount of ca- uh, cap space that they had starting off. Now their losses. In order for all those signings to happen, who do they lose? J.J. Watt, Will Fuller, Duke Johnson, Nick Martin, Darren Fales, Brian Anger. I don't know about you, but just reading off those signings and comparing that to the losses, I would say that the signings and the additions that you had outweighs the losses by a bunch. Yes, it sucks to lose Will Fuller. It sucks to lose J.J. Watt. It really does. But if you think about the direction that they're going in and signing these free agents, what they're doing is they are building competition at each position. That's what they're doing. They're trying to get the best out of their players by signing two additional running backs that could compete for a starting job. Who knows? Or could at least compete in a third down pass catching running back role. And Philip Lindsay and Mark Ingram with David Johnson, which by the way, another great thing that the Houston Texans have done, they restructured the contract of David Johnson. Got him down from eight million down to six million. So a good job by the front office and David Johnson. These players that they signed, they aren't game changing. They're really not. But this is great depth that they have on this roster and great positions to compete in training camp and preseason and potentially pushing who are already expected to be the starters and getting the best out of them. Now, the only one mess up that they had this offseason, they should have traded Deshaun Watson when they had the chance. Because as of right now, there are a lot of NFL teams that are backing out. And we know this, not because some source came out and said, oh yeah, we're not interested in Deshaun Watson anymore, but because of the actions of a lot of NFL teams, we can just go ahead and come to the conclusion that they're not interested in Deshaun Watson. For instance, the Carolina Panthers were annoying the general manager of the Texans so much because they kept on calling them, hey, is Deshaun available? We are we are ready to trade however many draft picks we need to to get that quarterback on our team. They were just annoying the Texans at this point. But it came out to the point that they traded for Sam Darnold once those sexual assault allegations happened. And because of that, it created a little bit of a domino effect in the process. So the Panthers got Sam Darnold. The 49ers traded up once, once the allegations came out. The 49ers... They didn't want to inquire about Deshaun Watson anymore. They said, we're trading up to the number three spot. We're going to draft a quarterback instead. 
The Jets traded away Darnold, which means that they would have been part of a trade with the Houston Texans if they kept Sam Darnold, shipped him off to, over to Houston, threw in some draft picks as well, and they get Deshaun Watson, which would have been the uh, preferred spot for Watson uh, in the first place. And then the Chicago Bears made a move for Russell Wilson because they knew that Deshaun Watson had all the sexual assault allegations. So once they made the move for Russell Wilson and that didn't turn out, they finally settled with Andy Dalton. So the 49ers, the Panthers, the Jets, and the Bears are out of the running for Deshaun Watson. That leaves the Broncos and the Dolphins as candidates that need a quarterback and could trade for Deshaun Watson. Well, here's the thing. Since Sam Darnold got traded to the Carolina Panthers, the Denver Broncos may not be interested in Deshaun Watson. You know how earlier I said that I'm going to mention which team could be interested in Teddy Bridgewater? How about the Denver Broncos being interested in Teddy Bridgewater? And that's because the general manager of the Broncos, George Patton, used to have connections, used to be on the the team with the Minnesota Vikings when Teddy Bridgewater was uh, their quarterback. So he has a lot of connections with Teddy Bridgewater, and he could pull the trigger because he's now the general manager of the Broncos, pull the trigger with the Carolina Panthers and getting Teddy Bridgewater to come to Denver and compete with Drew Locke for that starting quarterback job. Now that just leaves the Miami Dolphins. Now the Dolphins could do the thing where they trade a lot of the draft picks. They have a lot of draft capital. Actually, I love how the Dolphins just finessed everybody with that trade. Moving from number three to number 12 and then moving back up to number uh, six with the Philadelphia Eagles. In the process, they got an additional first-round pick at the end of the day, which is just genius by the Miami Dolphins. So, uh, anyways, the Dolphins could be in the running to land Deshaun Watson. It could happen. But I think that they have the draft picks that they have because they want to give Tugavailoa the resources that he needs to excel. So they don't want to trade any first-round picks because who knows? Maybe at number six, Kyle Pitts is available. Maybe Jamar Chase. Maybe uh, they get an offensive uh, lineman, the best offensive lineman in the draft in Sewell. Anything could happen with the Miami Dolphins at number six. And I feel like at this point with everything going on with Sean Watson and the allegations, it's a little bit too much. And you don't want to take that risk. So they're going to settle with Tua Tagovailoa for the time being. All right, I just got a little bit off topic. This is about the Houston Texans, not Deshaun Watson. But speaking of the Houston Texans, to to kind of wrap it up, they missed a chance when you could have drafted Deshaun Watson for three first-round picks, which there were at least two teams, I feel like, the Jets and the Panthers, that could have done a trade like that, but you missed out on it. And now, yeah, maybe you could get a first-round pick out of it, maybe only a second-round pick at best, but... I don't know. I, I think at this point it's just a little bit too far to really do anything with Sean Watson. But they're making up for it and signing Tyrod Taylor in the instance that it doesn't work out with Watson. And they also said that they have their eyes on Alex Smith and signing him in free agency just in case things don't work out with Watson and he won't be playing in 2021. But I just want to give props and take the time to just credit the Houston Texans with everything that they've done and signing all these great players. And yes, you had to get rid of J.J. Watt and Will Fuller and Duke Johnson. You had to get rid of these players because you just didn't have the cap space. But good job to you guys, the Texans. Really. I think the only move that I would make from this point forward would be maybe trade Brandon Cooks. I know that leaves a hole in your wide receiver spot, but you could trade Brandon Cooks before next offseason and maybe get another draft pick out of that and you would save 12 million dollars in the process so uh that's just one move i would make but the texans i feel like have had a very good offseason and if you guys are watching this listen to this leave your comments down below what do you feel like with the houston texans have they done a very good job so far this offseason but that'll wrap up this week's episode of time to football glad to be back seriously it's it's awesome just to have all this equipment here and, and, and just be able to be in front of the camera and, and, and film this for you guys and just talk about football and hang out with you guys as well. So if you guys just watch this video all the way through and premiered it as we premiere this on YouTube, appreciate you guys. I, I had fun hanging out with you guys and talking about football. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you guys can stay up to date when we come out with another podcast every single week. And you don't want to miss next week's as well. That's our NFL 
mock draft episode. It's going to be lots of fun. It's going to be funny. It's going to be hilarious as well because we're going to bring on Michael Watson, who was part of the draft last year, did a mock draft with us and that live reaction show as well. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. He's going to be helping us out with that mock draft as well. going to be on air. And make sure you guys subscribe to us on YouTube uh, for up-to-dates on when we come out with that mock draft, which is going to be next Thursday. But also... Subscribe to us on iTunes, on the podcast app. Search for us on Time to Football, rate, review, and listen to us on the go as well. Okay, so with this equipment, I can do lots of things. How should I end the show? Should I fade to black? No. Huh? I think I'll just end it. I don't know. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching this episode of Time to Football. Subscribe to us. Mock draft next week. And I'll see you guys next week. Take care.